Hi, this is Susan Burke. I am a staff scientist in bioprocess R&D with GE Healthcare Life Sciences. My presentation today is going to cover the topic of next-generation single-use film that has been purposely designed for optimized performance in biopharmaceutical manufacturing. What I'm going to talk about today is I'll first start with reviewing the complex demands that bioprocess films need to be able to achieve. In addition, I'll then walk through the first principles approach that we've taken in order to be able to develop a new film design and how we've then translated that film design into performance and process simplification for the end user. This, of course, technology has been built on a robust supply chain with heavy emphasis on ensuring security of supply. So first, let's talk about some of the challenges that exist today with bioprocess film. The question arises is why, why do we want to develop a new bioprocess film? And, you know, a lot of that has to do with the fact that single-use technology is really becoming more mainstream in the biopharmaceutical industry. And there are still some gaps that exist today. Um, for us, we wanted to focus on being able to close some of those gaps and, and be able to provide a film technology that could be a cornerstone for product development for years to come. That begins by looking at what the need is in terms of simplicity. How are we able to bring a benefit to our customers by streamlining the verification and qualification work that needs to be done in order to implement a new material into the bioprocess workflow? Um, by providing a single platform film, we're able to do that for them. In addition, um, in the past, a lot of film technologies were really borrowed from other industries, and the materials were not necessarily designed for the specific application in biopharmaceutical manufacturing. So we now place a heavier emphasis on material science, being able to meet those critical attributes for sensitive applications with biopharmaceuticals. In addition, we're looking at performance not only be with respect to the applications that we know exist today, but really thinking about the future and how our customers are trying to advance their technologies, um, increase their production, and what sorts of demands will be placed on bioprocess films in order to meet those needs in the future. As I mentioned earlier, we uh, did a lot of work with focusing on security of supply to mitigate the risk through the supply chain and quality controls, all the way from the resin, the raw materials, through to the assembly manufacturing. Because we know how reliant our customers are on this, they make very critical therapies for patients, and they need to continue to have a good supply so that they do not have a disruption to their patients, and we need to be able to support that for them. When we first started out to look at how we were going to approach the development of new film, we had to first take a step back and look at, that, look at how bioprocess film is used across uh, a biopharmaceutical manufacturing operation, looking at the upstream as well as the downstream applications, and map out all of the performance attributes that are critical across the board. And in doing so, we identified over 70 different critical to quality attributes that the film needs to be able to achieve. The summary on this table here just highlights some of the uh, key ones, but there are many more. And in order to be able to really have a good design for the film, we needed to go through this exercise to ensure we had the right attributes selected and specifications set to be able to achieve those. However, as I mentioned, even though there, you know, we have all of these attributes, it's not necessarily uh, easy to then take what uh, the attributes that are defined and then translate them and find the right balance because some of these uh, performance attributes are um, counter, run counter to each other. So it was very critical to think about how to balance the key attributes for optimal performance. We really had to get very smart about 
um, the design and how we were adjusting. For example, adjusting one attribute can have a negative impact on the performance of another. A good example of that is uh, with regard to film processing aids. In order to get a uh, film that is consistent and, um, uh, and is able to um, perform, the film processing aids are typically used in the manufacturing process. But what we do know is that those processing aids uh, tend to be small molecules and then have the potential to become um, leachates from the film in bioprocess applications, which has the potential to have a negative impact on cell culture performance. And therefore, we really had to think about what those additives were, minimize the use of them, as well as carefully select what compounds were being used in order to avoid any sort of um, potential challenges for this bioprocess film with more sensitive applications. So with the designing our, our solution, you know, we needed to have a good partner um, for the development of this film, uh, for the manufacturing of it. And we did a lot of work to identify the right partner for this project. In the summer of 2016, we announced um, that we've entered into uh, an exclusive commercial supply agreement with Sealed Air Corporation for the development of this film. They are a leader in polyolefin films for parenteral solution for over, over 30 years, and they, the, the, the collaboration targets the development of the supply of the new film for the portfolio of single-use bioprocess technology um, from GE. Sealed Air has uh, a, a strong history in healthcare, uh, films for healthcare applications, and they have a very uh, robust uh, quality management system and manufacturing excellence, and it became an easy choice to work with them on the development of this new film. Our strategy is to develop a bioprocess film that can um, be a platform film for us across the board. Currently, our portfolio exists, uh, consists of multiple different product lines that each one of which has its own film that is used in the product family. The reason for this is because we've built our bioprocess business through a series of acquisitions, and with each new um, addition to the portfolio came a new film. It's important to note, however, we will continue to support the legacy films and offer all of our existing products and the films that our customers have come to rely on, because we know how critical those films are uh, once they are implemented into a specific manufacturing process in the biopharmaceutical space. However, our goal is really to have one film for our customers to be able to introduce to any new product development initiatives that they start in the future. In order to have the most optimal um, film design, we really needed to dig deep and start from first principles. Um, working with Sealed Air, we've defined the performance needs and specifications. Um, as well as the criteria for the selection of resins and additives to the film. For example, we understand our customers' needs and there are certain uh, critical factors that um, we must comply with. For example, the materials must be of animal origin free, um, must be compliant with various standards such as USP and EP, in addition, we've leveraged our knowledge of bioprocess um, needs as well as sought the feedback from our customers to really get that voice of customer in order to design it into this film. Um, a good example of that is the need for more optimized antioxidants pa packages, uh, which has been addressed with this film. Through analysis of raw materials, um, you know, we were looking at the physical and mechanical properties of these, uh, doing extraction profiles on all of the 
raw materials that go into this film and working between ourselves and CLDARE to have a strong data package to support our customers with the knowledge of how this film is constructed and the materials that have gone into it. The schematic on this slide outlines our new 410 film structure. It is a co-extruded film manufactured in a Class A clean room environment. It is supplied to us as a double ply. That means the, the fluid contact surface is always um, touching another fluid contact surface, which allows for a, a more clean supply of material to us. The contact, uh, fluid contact layers are only exposed to Class 5 air um, in order to help ensure cleanliness. This the technology is patented, um, patent protected by a patent from Seal there. The structure has 10 layers. Um, many of the bioprocess film out there um, also have multi multiple layers in them, although um, many of them have fewer than 10 layers. But the design of this film is such that each one of these layers plays a critical piece in the overall performance of the, um, a critical role in the overall performance of the film. And over the next few slides, I'll walk through the details of each one of um, these materials. The fluid contact layer of the 410 film is a blend of polyethylene and cyclic olefin copolymer. This particular blend of resins was chosen because it provides a very clean material as well as the fact that it has offers very good moisture barrier properties. Cyclic olefin copolymer acts as a macromolecular slip agent, therefore eliminating the need for traditional small molecule additives, which tend to um, uh, have the ability to leach from the film and potentially impact the cell culture performance. Cyclic olefin copolymer is relatively new to the bioprocess space in terms of films. However, it is not new to the biopharmaceutical industry. There is application of it in um, vials as primary packaging for protein-based therapies, as well as syringe applications. This particular blend um, also provides a very tight matrix to, eliminate, to help to reduce the migration of potential leachates from the film. In order to show that this um, is an optimal um, fluid contact layer, we did a lot of different studies to be able to um, in show, demonstrate its performance. What I'm highlighting here is some of the extraction studies that we did, particularly with uh, looking for a degradant from a known antioxidant that is present in polyethylene-based materials. This TBBP molecule, Tris24-diterpbutylphenylphosphite, is a compound that is, has wide application in the plastics industry and has been known for, for some time in the bioprocess industry because there were some reports of it in previous cases leading to uh, the degradation of it, leading to a compound that had some impact on cell culture growth performance. Our attempt was to eliminate it completely from the supply chain. However, what we realized is that it is very difficult to do that. And uh, in order to have a better control and understanding of it, we then decided that we needed to work with suppliers that could show good control over it. And therefore, um, the materials that come in have specifications in place all the way down to the very basic raw materials that go into the film. Testing is done at Sealed Air, and, and then testing again is done by GE Healthcare to really understand what's going on with this particular molecule. This degradant has the, as I mentioned, has the potential to impact cell culture growth performance, and so we did a, a number of studies to understand our film and this compound. 
As you can see, the extraction data I show here shows that the Fortem film has the level of this compound that extracts from the film is below the limit of detection. This extraction was done at an elevated temperature of 50 degrees Celsius in water. The limit of detection is uh, two um, parts per billion in this case. And you can see the control films, which are bioprocess films that are on the market today, do show the extraction of that particular compound. So we were uh, pleased that, you know, by really thinking about the raw materials that go into the film and the, the structure of the film itself, how we were able to control the extraction of this particular molecule. The film also contains two gas barrier layers. There are two different types of EVOH that are added into this film with the red and orange layers in the schematic here. And the reason for adding two of these layers or two different molecules into this uh, film structure is to be able to provide barriers to gases in both wet or high humidity conditions and in dry conditions. We think about applications for bulk liquid storage and then also for dry powders where gas barrier properties are quite critical. So this allows us to provide more vers versatility in the applications for storage with this film. In order to have a robust, durable film, uh, a couple of, of different layers were designed into the film. Specifically, um, the outer layer is a nylon, and it is a specific resin that provides strength and even under hum humid conditions. It is a nylon-based material. The interior of the film also contains two layers that are polyethylene blends, and they provide robustness as well as flexibility to this film over a wide temperature range from the minus 80 degrees Celsius all the way up to temperatures as high as um, degrees Celsius. In order to qualify or, or really show the feasibility for this, we uh, wanted to ensure that uh, we had that durability uh, for a wide variety of different applications. And we chose to test this film in the most physically demanding applications, for example, liquid storage applications that require uh, low extraction but also integrity maintenance of integrity at a wide variety of, of temperatures, looking for deformation or integrity loss when exposed to both static and dynamic stresses. In addition, large-scale applications such as our Accelerex bioreactors and mixers add different types of stresses when you think about the large scale. So we needed to ensure that we did studies at the larger scales to ensure performance under over a wide temperature range, such as what is needed in microbial fermentation, but the, be able to do the phase and activation step, for example, at temperatures as high as 60 degrees Celsius. And just looking for integrity and robustness while we mimic the applications that the film will be used in. So I talked a lot about the materials of construction and the, the design of the, the film based upon what materials we, we used. However, it's also important to talk about the architecture, or how those uh, layers are orientated um, within the film. An example of this is and the need to really understand how architecture plays an important role is when we look at the need for robustness versus flexibility. There are challenges, for example, with the wave rocking motion and transport. You know, wave impact forces cause some unique stresses on the film, and while the film is in this flex, continual flex state, um, there are outer, um, the, uh, there's tension as well as compression forces that are happening. However, what we do know about film performance in this particular, with, under these types of stresses, is that within the interior of the film, there is an area known as the neutral plane where those, the compression and tension forces are minimized. And so we um, knew we could take advantage of that in order to put our, our 
materials in there that had less flexibility. So, for example, the EBOH layers that provide our gas barrier are materials that are less flexible, and therefore they are sandwiched inside the film interior in the location of the neutral plane where they are more protected to avoid any sort of cracking of those layers while the film flexes. And this is just a great example of how combining the knowledge of the materials and and putting that together with an understanding of the mechanical properties and stresses that will be on this film and combining that knowledge together to get the right design. This slide really is meant to highlight how we're able to translate all of the things that we've thought about and, and design into this film into the looking at the performance. So overall, we think about the, you know, the heart of what this bioprocess film is used in, and that is cell culture. And one of the ways in which we can understand that is through a uh, screening methodology, which we've established internally in this type of methodology. Media is taken and stored in a, in a container made from the film. It is rocked on using a waved bioreactor format for three days at 37 degrees Celsius and then four days at room temperature, while a control medium is stored uh, for seven days at four degrees Celsius. The medium is then taken and divided in triplicates and used for cell culture. In this case, the testing was done with a MAB-producing Cho DG44 cell line that we know to be sensitive, particularly to the degradant of the TBDT, or otherwise compound known as BDT, BPP, in a level uh, as low as 100 parts per billion. And what we found is that the population doubling as well as the cell viability were quite strong with the use of the 410 film. I talked a lot about the material selection and the film design. Of course, those are important aspects to this film, but just as important is the supply assurance. We need to be able to supply this film to our biopharmaceutical customers so that they are able to continue to produce their therapies for patients without interruption. And assurance comes through st strategic supplier selection, quality management, and business continuity. And as I mentioned earlier, our selection of Sealed Air as a partner for this film development was uh, really driven by their ability to meet our requirements uh, with regard to these three main pillars that we've outlined, from the selection of the resins and the supply, their relationships and partnerships with their resin suppliers are strong, and therefore they're able to ensure we will continue to have raw material to produce these. This film with change notifications and right to buy options in place. In addition, as I mentioned, their manufacturing excellence and strong quality management system that they are able to operate under, as well as their willingness to provide the type of safety stocks that we need to ensure continuous supply in the event of some unforeseen event happening. And in addition to that, we had to ensure that we were in a good position to be able to do this as well. So we are able to manufacture our, our bags under an ISO 7 clean room environment. Um, we've just in, ex, invested extensively into expanding that clean room. We're looking at adding more testing to um, and in-process controls and as well as adding additional claims to our supply of single-use technology that comes from GE. So by collaborating with a knowledgeable partner and applying the quality by design approach to the technical development and our supply chain strategy, we're able to deliver a, a platform film with a robust supply chain. At GE, we're investing in the future and really ensuring that we're listening to our customers and meeting their needs and continue to invest to meet those needs now and in the future. 
We're actively participating in industry associations to ensure alignment with our customer needs and expectations. And uh, we, our, our commitment to our customers is shown by our investment. For example, we've made um, more, the, more than $40 million in investments recently in capacity, quality controls of security, including uh, accreditation of business continuity management and the expansion of our clean room, as well as the establishment of a state-of-the-art laboratory for extractables and leachables testing. All of the product made from the Fortem film will be produced at our Westboro, Massachusetts facility. And we've recently gone through expansion and upgrades to that facility with a 3X expansion of our clean room, the addition of more automated manufacturing equipment to be able to drive quality improvement and efficiency, as well as looking at um, in-process sensors and how we collect data for critical process parameters to ensure that we can improve and maintain consistency of our products, as well as our business continuity accreditation, the details of which can be found on our GE Life Sciences website. So in summary, we've really uh, uh, worked diligently on purposeful design of a bioprocess film, supported for by strong foundation of material science knowledge, as well as application knowledge, in partnership with Sealed Air. We've designed it to achieve the critical to quality attributes across the different bioprocess applications and the various unit operations. And we really want this uh, film to be able to be that cornerstone film for us that uh, can serve our customers well now and in the future, meeting the industry needs. For example, providing extractables data to the latest industry standards and as well as supply chain transparency. We are looking to, for, towards future advancement in the biopharmaceutical manufacturing applications, and the, this film is the cornerstone to help us get there. Well, thank you for your attention.